everyone, it's Lauren Alvin with Add About Dog and Puppy Training. Last quickie in the chain of recalls. Look at my rainbow. Ooh, I'm in my book nook. Um, so this one is about reliability. They're all kind of about reliability, but what you want with an emergency recall is the ability to say the magic word and know that your dog is going to come. That requires picking the right word, making sure it doesn't need an end to play, and building up an enormous reinforcement history, or as we call it, savings account. So, you saw in the first video, I pay dog three super high value payments, food, in a row when they get to me, and on top of that, I'll let them go back out. Um, you could do whatever your dog is absolutely nutso about. You could do recalls for the special, special, special toy, or you could do recalls for jumping in a lake, which I've done, um, things like that but it has to be super amazing million dollar reinforcer. Whatever that reinforcer it is, it has to be one of or the very best things your dog could ever possibly think of partaking of. The reason for that is when you ask your dog to come or here or weasel or whatever it is, where's Waldo? Um, they are making a decision you want them to make the decision to abandon whatever they're doing and run back to you. That is a really hard decision. <laughs> so your recall is competing with every other distraction in the entire world. If your dog is running around free, they've got your whole continent to themselves if they feel fit to it. You're competing with a lot. Chasing squirrels, bunny smells, deers running off, something scary, who knows. You have to be able to cut through all of that brain noise and that chemical, you know, response for the dog to be able to go, a sound, I know what to do, and decide to do something completely different than whatever they are gung-ho running in the opposite direction already doing. That's really intense. But that means that we need to build our way up to it, and the savings account has to be huge. They have to go, running after a skunk, they hear, here, and they go, mmm, skunk a million dollars? but mom's put a million and one dollars in that account, so I'm gonna turn around and go back there. That's a decision they have to make. It's not because they're greedy or selfish, it's because dogs do what works for dogs, and behavior is a tool that animals use to produce consequences. Two old training tip Tuesdays you should go check out. Um, so they're making a decision. They have to go, mm, what's in it for me? All right, I'll do that, it makes more sense. The other thing about this is, whoops, my arm's getting tired. The other thing is you have to build up that ability. So they're not gonna know, even if you put $7 million in their account for coming in the yard, that's not the same as coming away from, you know, mid run after a skunk or coming away from body of water or coming when they're sniffing something or anything else. So you have to gradually mix in those distractions to make your practice look more and more like real life. So in beginner good manners class, the very first week we start with the dog on leash and we're just running back and forth. We say, dog, word, run, 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 pay $3 million. Dog, word, run, 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 pay $3 million. You're going like five or six feet back and forth. That's where it starts. And then you add in some more distance and then you sprinkle something on the ground so they're not expecting it. And then you ask them when they're, you know, actually engaged in eating it or actively engaged in rolling something or they can't see you or you say it angry because you're panicked or all these other things and then you take it outside and then you take it outside when the dog neighbor is out and then you take it outside further and then you take it outside when there's skunks a mile away and then you take it outside when they first see a skunk but before they start running etc etc you have to mix in all of the bits that are going to be part of the finished picture so that they can do that when you get to the point where they're able to do a finished picture you can't jump from kindergarten to graduate school and expect them to be able to do it. If it's an emergency and you've only been practicing that word for a day, use it. Do what you gotta do to get your dog back to you and safe, but don't expect it to work and don't go around saying it in order to pay them in different ways until you know you're willing to bet $100 at least that they will come back to you. Every time they come to you and you don't pay them whatever it was worth to them, if they're running after a million dollar skunk, and you come, they come back to you and you pay them with a scratch on the head or a good job, which isn't even pennies in Nina's book if she's excited, then you just took the difference out. A million dollars, a million dollars minus two cents is taken out of their account. You have to build it back up for them to be able to make that decision next time. It's learning history. 
If it doesn't work for them, they're not going to keep doing it. So I could go on this for a while, but it's already five minutes and I'm trying to keep this actually short. <laughs> Let me know if you have any questions or requests. Um, we have puppy class openings for the next session starting September 15th. Um, and then I think the next adult is also filled. I'm pretty sure the only openings for adult are in October, but there might be some for September 26. Adults fill up fast, so grab it if you want it. October is gonna be our last one of 2018, so last chance before the new year. <laughs> Get your dog signed up. Um, plenty of room for puppies, so signing up too for that. This Saturday, September 8th, I'm gonna be at the Animal Health Clinic of Funkstown for their family fun day, which is so cool. If I, if this was around when I was like 10, I would have been all over it. Um, they let, they, in the past years at least, they let the kids go in like the surgery room and you know, pretend to do surgery on stuffed animals and you get to be a vet for a day. It's so much fun. And I'm gonna do a, a kid and dog safety presentation uh, on how to be a tree. So it's getting shaky, my arm is tired. I need a tripod. <laughs> Take care everyone, bye-bye.